I don't give a shit. I had control, and that's what it, what it all comes down to. Fuck them all. You are listening to Toronto's only pure metal show, The Red Switch. You're actually listening to the Red Switch right now. My name is Matt, and I'm talking to... Uh, I'm Anastasia. Darcy. I'm Zuck. I'm Zyka. And uh, I'm Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't have Nathan here tonight, so... Anastasia speaks for him. You guys are playing tonight with Fuck the Facts and The Great Collapse, who also have female-fronted band members. Is that a coincidence? Was uh, was that planned, or how did that come about? Because I mean, like for a casual uh, fan of the group, that seems like a very obvious booking or uh, or billing. You mean the the billing? Um, yeah. The governor did bring it up, and he mentioned that it seemed unique that there was going to be uh, three bands playing, all with beautiful ladies in them. Um, <laughs> But I, I'm not sure. I don't think it was deliberate. It, it just, was not deliberate, actually, no, at no. all. The weird thing is, is that all three bands that have chicks are good bands, and that is very rare. Uh oh, misogynistic. <laughs> I love it. Um, in any case, yeah, it was, uh, to my knowledge, at least, a uh, complete coincidence. I think the fact that there are three bands and each has a female member just means that. The metal world is kind of opening its doors to women more and more. And not done in a sense where, you know, women feel like they're accepted now, but I think girls really just, they, we don't give a fuck anymore. And it's just, that's the way it is. If you are talented, if you're a musician, doesn't matter what gender you are, so go with it. That's how I feel. I think the world's uh, really grown beyond the whole, oh, she's a girl, she can't play heavy music or she can't scream at a grindcore band that's uh it's a little too 1992 for me i mean there's there's always going to be the douchebags who are like that chick is so hot yeah I, naked. I don't even know the name of that band but they had a hot chick in it but i mean there's just people like that in the world and it, no matter where they go they're just gonna see tits and ass anyway so it's so, a- so metal at this point right now is a very big boys club so if there is a woman in the group and she just happens to be attractive, that will be the uh, the sort of bait for the entire music. Uh, is that true? For some people, maybe. Uh, That's false. <laughs> for uh, for morons and douchebags, I guess. Um, Not true metal fans. If, if, I mean, that, what the big difference about metal fans compared to most music fans is that the first thing that attracts them to the music is the music. So, whereas having a hot girl shaking her booty in uh, gold lame shorts might work for... Uh, An American apparel ad or a fucking hip-hop video. Uh, exactly. Uh, I think metal fans are going to be attracted to a metal band regardless of the uh, sex appeal of the membership. I mean, all you have to do is look at successful metal bands from the past. They're or, fucking ugly. Yeah, it's a bunch of ugly dudes. So uh, I don't think there's a I, I don't think there's a lot of significance to the uh, the attractiveness of the, uh, of, of the female members, at least in terms of our ability to garner fans and appeal to people. So so far at this point, uh, your music has pretty much spoken for itself. Uh, that and our elf like attire, I suppose. Yeah. Elf like. <laughs> Not today, but uh, the, uh, at some point in the past. Well, I, I must notice that, that you guys do have some sort of, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Elf-like attire. Actually, yeah, this shirt is from a store called uh, Fairy's Pajamas. So it's... Uh... <laughs> Alright, so, first of all... We're not fairies! What we're recording right now, nobody can see. We have no video. So you have to explain in detail what you're wearing right now. So what are you wearing? It's a leaf-like uh, black shirt. Looks like a leaf. And, uh, and a bunch of bracers. I made all the bracers. For oh yeah, because I'm fucking crafty. Because I'm a chick. <laughs> I'm smiling. I think um, more of the connection with mythology or paganism with us is really just about the fact that in 
past times, humans have had a far closer connection to nature than we do now. We live in a fucking concrete slab, and that's completely uninspiring. So I think the only kind of um, paganism or, or mythology we draw on really, uh, you know, accepts the fact that we are a part of nature and that by hurting ourselves, we are hurting it and vice versa. And yeah. So, if you guys had a chance, would you tour on Pagan Fest? Uh, uh, we would. Last year, actually, and it was a really funny set of circumstances. We uh, joked amongst ourselves, oh, it'd be so cool to open for Pagan Fest if it comes here. But we all know that it's a touring festival for bands. I, it was last year. Now that it was five this year, I think. But, uh, you know, not happening. I, they all, so no they all get full sets. And then the night before the show in Toronto, we all had our tickets. And... Uh, and we got a call from the local promoter, uh, Inertia Entertainment, uh, and he called me up and he said, Darcy, Aluvity, the opening band on Pagan Fest, can't make it over the border because they don't Did have he say it like that? <laughs> this is how Noel talks and we love him for it. I was wondering if you guys would like to open Pagan Fest tomorrow. And, and we Peter Pants a lot, not just a little. <laughs> And uh, time. ten minutes in later, we uh, yes. I tracked down everybody in the band. We all took the next day off, and we actually did end up opening Pagan Fest. Really? Um, which was really weird. Was uh, I think it was. Uh, Who was billed for that? It was supposed to be Eluviti, uh, Tear, Enciferum, and Turisas, or Eluviti, uh, due to some complications with, with their, their passports. with their passports or something. They weren't able to make it into Canada, so. Uh, we played in uh, Toronto, and then the next night uh, in Montreal, uh, where some of us actually traveled to go see the show, uh, Gwynblyde from New York yeah. uh, was the opening band, and uh, with similar awesomeness. Tonight, you guys were playing with Fuck the Facts. They're uh, a pretty big group in their own right. Has there been any other big uh, metal groups and their own popularity have you played with so far? Or at least you have been starstruck in your own sort of metal oh, way. Oh, God, yes. Oh, God, yes. We have had countless opportunities now to open up for bands that we ha ourselves have been fans of for years. <laughs> Tear, Turi Sus, and Seferum a few times. Really? Um, Fin Troll. And this summer, there's a secret tour that we, we are not allowed to disclose, but we are going to crap our pants repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. So we are very, very fortunate to have these opportunities. Um, since we, as a band, as these members that are that are here right now, we've only been together for about a year, so um, it's yeah, we're really lucky. I'm sure probably a lot of people want to know where did you get your name from? How did you come up with that? And why is it is important it to the group? Um, Lots of beer, <laughs> desperation of beer. mostly. Um, we used to be called O'Fallon, and that was the name of the band. I started it in London. Uh, with a completely different group of musicians, but a lot of the same songs that we still play today. And O'Fallon is the o ancient Gaelic form of my mother's maiden name, and it's got a really cool meaning, but nobody could say it, nobody could pronounce it, nobody could spell it, including, you know, some members. Jekka <laughs> still has not been able to spell or say it. How do you say it? O'Fallon? O'Fallon? I get confused every single time I say it. So we realized basically that having a name that nobody could really spell or understand or say really wasn't doing us any favor. So we, especially <laughs> after we took on a new rhythm section with Zach and Nathan uh, a little over a year ago, we decided to switch things up and we picked the name Silvis, which is uh, derived from Latin meaning of the forest. And a lot of our music is very inspired by nature, obviously, but particularly the old forests throughout the world. And uh, so we figured it was fitting because it's universal enough and it's also simple enough that, you know, you can spell it on the second or third try. And find her MySpace if you need to, so. Hey, hey.